What's up, navigation traders? Today is Friday, April 13th. Hope everybody had a great week of trading. If we take a look at just the S&P 500 to start, uh, you know, uh, the 9th was the first day of the week and we just had kind of a volatile grind higher, I like to call it. So some big swings early in the week and then just kind of a little bit of a grind higher. And so looking for an anticipation into next week of potentially a rollover back down to the downside. Uh, we're, we're positioned for that. We've got some short delta, which I'll go over towards the end of the video here to show you kind of where we stand as a portfolio. But that's what we're anticipating. Doesn't mean it's going to happen. I mean, this thing could, could obviously rip higher and we would just adjust and, and play the necessary positions to adjust to that. Uh, but keep it continuing to keep short delta in our portfolio uh, for the case of some downside movement. So let's go to our alerts for the week. Uh, we had actually fewer alerts this week than we have in most. Uh, just was waiting for some positions to come in a little bit more. But we started with on Monday a closing adjusting trade in soybeans. So we closed out a put vertical spread in May. And that was part of a uh, part of an iron condor previously, but price popped back up and gave us a, a nice little profit on this piece of the trade. And then we're still holding a full iron condor in the June cycle. So if we go to soybeans and take a look at our analyze tab, you can see price is hanging out right here. So no profit or loss on the trade at this point. Could use a little bit of downside movement and just some more time to pass before we do anything else on soybeans. Next trade was a closing adjusting trade in FXI. So this is a trade where we had a couple different positions on. We closed out one of our short strangles for a profit of 40% of max profit. We were only in this piece of the trade for 12 days. And so now we're just holding on to our other adjusted strangle in FXI, which looks like this. So it's the 49 call 50 put, so slightly inverted. Could just use a little bit of up movement in FXI to benefit that. And overall, with with the we've we've made multiple adjustments in FXI, and uh, and we're we're at a profitable point in the trade overall. But I'd like to take a little bit more profit out of this trade, and if we could get some more theta to decay and potentially a little up movement into next week, uh, we'll look to uh, we'll look to book that fairly soon if that happens. Otherwise, we'll continue to manage as needed. Next trade was a closing trade. So we had a position on in oil forward slash CL in the oil futures. Booked a nice profit of around 35% of max profit, only in the trade for about 15 days. So we, we took that off and, and booked that profit. The very next alert, actually not two alerts later, so I'll just go jump to this one and, and then we'll come back to IYR. Uh, in CL, a, a couple of alerts later, so basically the next day, we took that off on 410, on 411 the next day, we entered a new position on CL. And so IV percentile popped up to the 64 level at that point, and so we put on a new strangle in oil. And if we take a look at the chart of oil first, what we'll see is the IV percentile is still hanging out around the same area that we put it on. So IV percentile of 63, and so we're just waiting on this one. There's no, uh, not much decay has happened since we just put it on. So it's still very centered right, uh, right where we need it. So just need some more time to pass there. And then coming back to IYR, we did a closing trade where we had a short strangle in IY, uh, IYR. I uh, had to make a couple adjustments on the trade, but ended up booking a nice profit. If we take a look at IYR now, we actually have another another strangle on that we put on in a later alert and just a, a little bit of profit, but not enough to take off yet. And we wanted to continue to keep a position on in IYR because the IV continues to stay high. Percentile is 83, IV rank of 42. And uh, so just, just wanting to continue to keep that exposure to real estate. I, uh, IYR is the real estate ETF. So you know, we like to keep exposure to different asset classes. And that's part of the reason we're able to be so consistent is because of that diversification in symbols, but also be sure to diversify in actual asset classes. So you're not all loaded up in different stocks. Uh, we, we have, as you can see here, we've got oil, we've got the S&P, we've got nat gas, we've got notes, 
we've got soybeans, wheat, we've got a couple stocks, then we've got some emerging market ETFs like EWZ and EWW, uh, FXI, Chinese large cap, gold, uh, small caps, real estate, NASDAQ, which is primarily tech stocks, Tesla, XLK, uh, XLU, which is utilities, and XRT, which is retail. So we've got a really good mix of, of trades. I love where our portfolio is, and, and we continue to have high implied volatility in a lot of different symbols, giving us the ability to have a very nice diversified portfolio. So we'll continue to keep it that way as long as we can keep that IV high. Um, I went over the oil one. Next trade was a closing adjusting trade in the ES. So in this one, we had an iron condor. Price came down and breached our downside break even, so we were still holding the short put vertical. And then when uh, this week, as the S&P has, has moved up, uh, we were able to take that off, booked a small winner on that piece of the trade, and then we're still holding our other full iron condor in ES. So if we take a look at that, We've got two different positions on here. Uh, the first one that I just mentioned with that uh, with that alert is the is the iron condor. So let's reset that so we can uncheck these boxes. Uh, so you can see this is still very centered. Got some profit, not not quite enough to take off yet. So we'll continue to to monitor that. And then the other piece, which is a separate trade, not part of our iron condor trade, is the long put uh, vertical, which we have on for that short delta. And so just. You know, price is just barely out of our range. We just need a little bit of down movement in the S&Ps to benefit that one. Next trade was an opening trade in IYR. So remember, we had a couple days previous, we closed out that trade. Implied volatility continued to stay high. We wanted to keep that exposure in real estate, so we opened up a new position, sold a strangle, sold some premium in, uh, in uh, IYR. At that time, implied volatility percentile was at 88 and I already showed you that on the graph, still very centered, nothing to do at this point there. I also mentioned, and I try to, I try to do this as, as much as possible, but I also mentioned on the trade comments, if you prefer to find a risk, you could buy the wings and just make sure you're collecting enough credit to justify the risk in transaction costs. So I get some questions about that sometimes, uh, and, and it really just depends on, on what kind of credit you're getting. So for example, on IYR, you know, we are, we've got a max profit of $325 on this trade. Well, if you do an iron condor and you buy the wings, that max profit is going to come down significantly. But of course, you do have the defined risk and that's what you kind of give and take. Uh, but you just got to make sure that the amount of risk you take is, is worth it. So as a rule of thumb, just like we teach in the course, we want our max profit to be at least a third of the total capital used or, or uh, max, max loss on an iron condor. So uh, with these smaller uh, price symbols like IYR, if it's under $100, this one's about $74. Bucks. Uh, with those, sometimes it's a little tough to get enough credit to make it worthwhile on an iron condor. Uh, you might have to buy the wings out a little bit further out, uh, which, which, is, which is definitely a, an option as well. But, uh, but on, these, on these smaller price symbols, I like to do the naked options. I like to do the, the uh, uh, you know, naked strangles and straddles just because it gives you that credit that you need to make it worth the trade. So it's, it's just a personal preference, but that's why I try to put on these alerts. You know, if, if you are in an IRA or if you just are not quite there as far as your comfortability, if that's even a word, with, uh, with undefined risk, then you can, you can buy those wings to, to define that trade. So hopefully that's helpful. And then lastly, last trade was today was a closing adjusting trade in XRT. So this is another trade that we have made several adjustments to. Uh, so we took off, you can see it's zeroed out now. We took off the 41, 47 uh, strangle, booked a nice profit there, but we're still holding this 46 uh, straddle, which originally was a strangle, but we have adjusted into a straddle. And so now price is just hanging out right here. So if we closed it out right here, we would we would book a nice profit of, I think, a little over $160 uh, after all adjustments and everything. But I'd like to see a little bit more profit. So if we get a little bit more up move, uh, we'll probably take that off next week, as well as, you know, obviously, if implied volatility contracts uh, significantly, giving us some more profit, we'll take that. If price does continue lower, then we'll, we, we would probably add another centered position around that to adjust, take in some more credit, extend that duration, 
if we look at the options in May, they've got 35 days to expiration. So we'll still continue to put positions on in May uh, into early next week. And then, you know, we've got uh, just uh, 63 days in June. So we'll start adding some June positions uh, probably late next week. Uh, so that's kind of the game plan in, in XRT and in some of these other equities where we've got 35 days in May and 63 in June. We'll start to build up that June portfolio. So those were all the alerts. Let's take a look at some of the other positions. I went over oil, went over ES, Nat Gas. So we've got an iron condor in Nat Gas, still has 42 days to expiration. Uh, you can see it's still very centered. We've got some profit there, but we wanna, we wanna wait for a little bit more before we take that off. In the notes, forward slash ZN, we've got a short strangle on here. We'll widen that out for you. So we've got some profit here, a little over 108 bucks. Uh, could use a little bit of an up move and some more contraction in IV before we book profits in ZN. Uh, ZS soybeans already mentioned wheat. We've still got an iron condor in wheat. So got a nice profit there, very centered. Looking for a little bit more profit before we take that one off. And I'll have to go back and double check, but I think, I mean, we've been in this wheat trade for months and just continuing to manage and adjust as needed after a huge move against us uh, in the last year, in 2017. Uh, I think if we took this off right now, we'd actually be to the point of profit after all those mechanical adjustments that we've done. But I will, uh, I'll make sure I calculate that uh, second, a second time just to be sure. And we'll either add another piece to continue this position or if we're in the profit, we'll probably just get out of wheat because we do have uh, high IV and, and so many other ETFs and, and other positions. So stay tuned on that, but uh, potentially early next week if, if price stays pretty steady and we get some contraction in IV, we may be booking that wheat trade. Apple, so we put this Apple trade on initially for some short delta in our portfolio. And I've gotten some questions about this of, you know, why, why Apple, you think, it's, you think it's going down? And it's not that I necessarily think Apple as a specific position is going to go down, but it was, you know, it had that downside movement, kind of popped, popped its head back up. I was looking for a potential continuation to the downside. Now we've had it, you know, with the, with the rest of the market going up, we've had some uh, up movement this week. But remember, we put these positions on for a couple different reasons. Because of our assumption in that underlying symbol, so because of our assumption in Apple, I was looking for some potential more downside in Apple, but also we wanted to add this as short delta to our portfolio. And so, uh, you know, Apple is a, is a stock that was as good a position to put a, a short piece of the trade on. We didn't have any earnings coming up to worry about or anything like that. Uh, we already had, you know, short premium positions in a lot of the ETFs and futures that we like to trade. So that's why we just chose Apple to look for some potential downside. Now we'll still continue to hold this, let the probabilities play out. Uh, we may roll or close as we get closer to expiration, but remember, we've got 35 days. We've got a ton of time, and so we'll just continue to monitor this, and it is giving us some of that short delta that we like to keep in our portfolio. You can see we've got a negative 20 delta uh, as, as a piece of that short delta in our portfolio. DIA, we've got a couple pieces on here. so. First thing we've got is a iron condor, which you can see we've got some nice profit on, and we'll continue to, to let a little bit more theta decay potentially over the weekend. Hope to look to manage this one, book a profit on this piece of the trade early next week. And then we've got these two short call verticals, which were originally from an iron condor. You can see with the up movement of stocks, price has kind of moved up out of our range, but again, we're holding these for some continued downside potentially and to keep that short delta in our portfolio. And again, we've got 35 days before, uh, before expiration, so we'll continue to monitor that. EWW, we've got the short strangle here. You can see price is kind of hanging up in the upper end of our range, so it could use a little bit of down movement in EWW. EWZ, uh, I actually got, try, was trying to get filled on this earlier today uh, didn't get filled. And I didn't want to chase it. I figured I'd give it over the weekend. If we get a little bit of a pop higher in price and a little bit more contraction in IV, we'll probably book this one. We've only been in this trade for about uh, about 
10, 12 days, I think. I'll have to double check that, but about 12 days. So we're at a point where we could take some early profits in this one if we just get a little bit more. I just didn't want to chase on getting it filled. Uh, so we'll, we'll look at that early next week as well. FXI, I went over that. We've got that adjusted strangle. GLD, we've got an iron condor on in gold. You can see we got a little bit of profit. Just looking for some more uh, uh, premium decay before we take that one off. IWM, we've got an iron condor in here as well. So it could use a little bit of down movement and some more theta decay to benefit that piece. Uh, I went over IYR, QQQ. So we've still got a couple of short call verticals in the Qs. They're just one strike different. We've got the 162, 165, and we've got the 163, 166. You can see we've got a little bit of profit uh, at this point on these on these pieces, but just looking for some more downside movement to benefit that, and, uh, and we'll continue to monitor that. These were originally part of an iron condor, and we've just been kind of rolling and managing them to keep short delta in our portfolio and just to continue to manage our way in the in the Q's trade. So if we got a if we got a nice uh, move, or even if we don't, potentially depending on where price and volatility and our other positions are into early next week. You know, the, the implied volatility in the Qs continues to stay high, IV percentile around 90. So we could potentially look to add another iron condor in the Qs, center that around current price. I'd like to probably wait until June uh, gets down to, to 60 days or under, right in our sweet spot of where we like to enter trades. Not that three days makes a huge difference, but just looking for a little bit more time to pass before we jump in that one. <coughs> Excuse me. Tesla. So this is another one that we put on for some short delta. And you can see it's still basically right. The price is right pretty close to where we put it on. So just looking for some downside to benefit Tesla. If you look at Tesla, kind of the same thing as Apple. We had this you know huge rally uh, late last week. And so we looked to put on some short delta. And, and this looked like a, a good stock to do it in. Don't have any earnings coming up too soon we've we've we actually got them in about three weeks now but if we've got a couple weeks and then we'll decide if we want to hold through earnings or not uh but but when we but we had this big move down and this pop higher and what we were looking for is just kind of like apple just maybe a potential uh continuation to the downside so we'll see what happens in tesla but again it's it's utilizing tesla that position to continue to keep some short delta in our portfolio as well XLK, kind of a same, same thing. We, we're using this for short delta. You can see we've got a long put vertical, a little bit out of our range, just looking for some downside movement to benefit that. And then XLU, uh, this, is, this is one that I was trying to get filled on as well, but again, didn't want to chase. We're almost to the point of, of where we want to be of, you know, we're over 40% of max profit and I'd like to get 50% out of this one. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to let it run away from me either. Uh, so I'm going to, you know, we'll look to manage this one, book, book profits here potentially next week. And then XRT, I already went over this one. So, so those are all the trades. Those are all the positions. I want to take just a minute to go over to our monitor tab and give you an idea of where we are with our, you know, I always talk about this, keeping this short delta in our portfolio. And remember, we like to beta weight this to SPY, okay? So that turns all these different apples and oranges and bananas and grapefruits and, and helps us compare apples to apples. So we're just comparing it to SPY. So depending on what, you know, to give you an idea of based on what SPY does, it could potentially give you a theoretical idea of, of where the rest of your portfolio is going to go. So what we've got here is SPY weighted delta is, uh, you know, in May, we've got negative 184. And in June, we've got negative 32, call it 33. So we've got over 200 short delta. And what we like to measure that against is our theta. So we've got theta of $81 in May and 67 in February. So we've got, what is that, 140, 100, between 140, 150. And then we've got over 200 in short delta. So remember, we like to keep a ratio of short delta to theta of about you know, one to one, all the way up to one to five. So if we have $100 in theta, we like to have a short delta of 100 to 500. And so we're right, we're right there. We've got a little bit of short delta. We've got some nice theta working in our favor. So as those options decay, we're collecting that premium and booking profits. 
and then we've got that short delta for, for a little bit of downside protection. So that's how we that's how we like to manage these and keep that short delta because remember, when you're selling premium and you're putting on these range bound type trades, you've got to protect yourself from the downside. And so that's why we that's why we keep that short delta. Now, if you see us, you know, if we're at like we were trading at all time highs in 2017 and into January of 2018, we were closer to five hundred dollars of short delta compared to about hundred dollars of theta. So we were at about a five to one ratio. And when we think the market's at, at potential extremes, that's when we like to load up a little bit more on short delta in case we can get some downside action. Uh, if we had a huge move down and, and ended up having long delta, you know, we like to be a little bit more neutral uh, in our delta at that point. Uh, so it's just a, it's a constant management game, managing your portfolios. We put on and take off trades and we look at those on an individual basis, but then we also look at each position as it relates to our overall portfolio with that short delta to theta ratio. By the way, one other thing, you'll see down here, I wanted to mention this, I don't know if anybody else is having this problem with Thinkorswim, but I keep getting these potential Reg T calls. And, and what that means, basically is what that means is they're saying it's a potential margin call, but we're using about, we're using less than 40% of our capital right now. And, uh, but I keep getting these and, and just to give you an idea of, of what you can do when this happens, all you gotta do is you can hit the little support chat tab in TOS. And this pops up and you can see here, I said, hello, why is my account showing a potential Reg T call? This has happened a couple weeks ago as well. Is this another error? So about once a week over the last few weeks, I keep getting this, this kind of an error reported. And, and they just said, you're not in danger of a Reg T call. This is a glitch in our platform that our developers are working on, blah, 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 as a rule of thumb. As long as your option buying power is positive, you are not in danger of a call. Okay, thank you. So anyway, I just wanted to point this out, uh, A, so that if you saw this in the video, you you would know what, what, what that is. It's just a glitch in their system. And if you've had the same problem with Thinkorswim, you know, giving you that, uh, the easiest thing to do is just click that support chat button, ask them what's going on. And as you can see, it was just a, a little glitch. So just a little FYI. I use that support chat quite a bit. Instead of calling the trade desk, it's just easier to kind of type that in and then they'll answer when they do and you can you can kind of respond whenever you're ready. So neat little feature in TOS. All right, guys, that is all. Hope everybody has a great weekend. Look forward to some more good trading on Monday and into the future. Everybody have a great weekend. Talk to you soon.